I had actually heard of Orland because there was a small article in a recent On The Edge that was on Finnish bouldering, but it, it just mentioned Orland amongst some other places as well. So, but other than that, no, not really. Oh, I'd never heard of Orland, no. I mean, the first thing I knew about it was when Ben sent me an email with the name of a place that I couldn't even pronounce. <laughs> so, I had to, first of all, I had to get a map to try and find out where it was. Clueless. Of the bouldering destinations around the world, few can match the Oland Islands for its combination of untouched beauty and array of climbing problems. With a population of just 25,000, the demilitarized Swedish-speaking community of Åland is an ideal place for climbing in solitude, submerged in nature and surrounded by sea. For one week in late summer 2003, climbers from Britain, Sweden and Finland descended upon the sleepy archipelago in the Baltic Sea to do what they do best, climb. Viisi taisi olla ensimmäinen kerta ja silloin oltiin kyllä niin innoissaan kuin voi ikinä olla. Että ei kuviteltu, että tämmöistä Suomesta löytyykään, mutta täällä sitä oli. Tämmöistä jyr jyrkkää kiipeilyä. Ja jos oli joskus löydetty kattoja tuolta mantereelle, niin se ei kyllä sillä yleensä ole otteita, mutta täällä niitä tuntuu olevan joka paikassa. Niin tästä sitten innostuttiin. No tää keetta nyt on tämmöinen, täällä on sitten just sitä jyrkkää kiipeilyä, paljon krimppejä ja semmoista. Aika rankkaa kiipeilyä pääosi. Menemään tää on semmoista niinku palikkaista vähän. Semmoista on tosi oterikasta, että linjat menee, missä yleensä mankat menee, että ne on tehty sillä No täällä on ehkä, no täällä on ihan niinku ihan helposta, mistä vaikeusasteko alkaa, niin siitä lähtien sitten johonkin mä luulen, että tommosen kasi, kasi aahan asti on täällä bouldereita täällä keetalla. Ihan laidasta laitaa. Joutuu tuota, tietenkin ensin joko Helsingistä tai Turusta menee laivalla ja se nyt kestää semmonen kuusi tuntia aina tulla laivalla ja sitten täällä vielä ajaa vähän. No täällä nyt ei ole pitkä matka paikan päällä, on tommonen reilu puolen tunnin ajo tosta satamasta, mutta kuitenkin on siinä se oma. Aina kun joutuu laivaa käyttämään tai jotain, niin ei tule niin helposti lähettyä sitten. Mutta ehkä tää nyt on pysynyt paljon mielenkiintoisempana tää paikka vielä, kun täällä käy kuitenkin kerran maksimissaan kaksi kertaa kesässä. Se oma hohto sitä aina lähtee tänne. Sitten vasta tuli myöhemmin. Esimerkiksi silloin ekalla kertaa, kun me oltiin 95, niin ei me kiivetty oikeastaan yhtään semmoisia, niin sanotaan nykyään bowlereiksi, vaan me kiivettiin näitä sivuttaa näitä seiniä. Sitten vasta myöhemmin, sanotaan sitten pari kesää sen jälkeen, niin me ruvettiin sitten kiipeämään noita kiviä ja kaikkea. Ja kyllähän täällä oli varmaan jotain kiivetty jo, mutta kyllä me sitten tehtiin itse aika paljon siinä alkuvaiheessa. Niitä mitä silloin alkuun kävi, niin ei täällä juuri 
paljon ketään näkynyt, mutta nykyään näkyy niin kuin <laughs> paljon muumaalaisia kuin suomalaisia ja ruotsalaisia. Että on ihan käynyt joka puolella tuolta Euroopasta väkeä. Taitaa vaan tykätä, kun täällä niitä näkee vähän väliin. Täällä on niin kauniit maisemat, että tämä luonto on vähän, tämä on vähän erilaista, mitä tuolla on tottunut. Ja tämä on niin rauhallista. Tästä kun katsoo mihin tahansa, niin ei näy mitään, mitä ihminen on sanonut aikaan, mutta kun noin mank- mankkailet tuossa seinässä. Kyllä saa rauhassa olla aika kiipeilijöitä täällä käykin, mutta niitä on kuitenkin loppujen lopuksi aika vähän. Tämä on, sillä tämä on tosi, tosi kiva paikka. I came this year at Easter time, the first time, and uh, I have never been here. And uh, now this is my third time this year, so <laughs> it's really nice being here. I think this is one of the best places in Finland. It's so peaceful and quiet here, just being in the forest all the time. Being able to go and swim and you can see no people around, it's really nice and you can climb anywhere. The only problem is that the locals don't like people driving on the private roads, but <laughs> otherwise you get to walk a lot and see the nature, it's really nice. Mitä 
I did it last time, but now I didn't have any strength because I climbed so much yesterday. But that was really nice. I have quite a good technique, but I don't have enough <laughs> strength. So I just have to work on that and come again. <laughs>
Well, I thought it looked stunning. Uh, I didn't think it looked too difficult either. Um, even though the top was slopey, I thought it wouldn't be too bad. But the problem is, slopey top on itself is not necessarily a bad thing. Often, you know, when you get to the slopers at the top, they'll actually feel quite good. But it's the fact that you're just coming around a little lip, so your legs are underneath you, and you're reaching around for slopers, and you're having to sort of climb around this, this little overhang that makes it hard and scary. <laughs> yeah, it was just, you know, it's quite scary, the top bit's about, you know, probably five metres off the ground and uh, it's very slopey, very committing, uh, it's not good conditions, I mean it hasn't been good conditions all week, I mean it's, you know, mid-twenties and I'm sure if, if it was the winter or something that, you know, it'd feel a lot different on those slopers at the top, uh, could have top roped the problem, maybe, and then done it, but uh, I've never really been into sort of top roping things and then and then leading them or soloing and stuff. I don't know, just I, because I've been climbing for a long time, people, people didn't really do that sort of 20 years ago and stuff, so it's just something I've done. You're out of there, Ben. Well, it's really greasy. Okay. It's scary. Oof. That looks scary as fuck.
I just say, well, I think it's good, and uh, I hope that I don't really like want to like spray about it and say like, oh, it's as good as Fontainebleau or it's as good as like compared to other places. I I hope that people just when I t when I say, well, I think it's good. I enjoy climbing there. That they should like sort of become interested and go here for themselves. I think it's just uh, begun actually, because uh, there's so much left to do and it's, the area is vast. Yeah. Compared to other areas, uh, that's almost they're they're developed already, nothing much left to do, but here it's just, uh, seems like we find area after area all the time. Flash AP! Rad! Rad! Definitely part and parcel of the whole experience of going climbing, for me at least. Going climbing somewhere, that, if it's good climbing and somewhere very beautiful, then that's fantastic. And just being able to sit and rest in between problems somewhere really beautiful and soak it all in is uh, great. Just that feeling of remoteness and just like not many people have ever been there. It feels like humans have had very little impact on that area, which is quite rare to find these days. You could go there and spend all day there just relaxing and doing a little bit of climbing and feel like you've had a great day. I think, especially since this, uh, like, Fogelberget is getting so good and uh, the problems there are really interesting and... Well, first, the problems are interesting, a lot of them are very technical and then there is also, 
like some of the very powerful problems, like the roof problems and stuff. Uh, I think more people will come, and also because of the, well, partially of course for the setting, because it's like I think it's it's yeah. such a unique setting, it's so beautiful, and also uh, it's pretty skin friendly. It's like you can you can boulder for quite a few days in, in a row and still still have skin left because it's not very sharp. And in one way, I hope it will be a lot of people coming here. And in one way, I don't. Because it's, that's the nice thing about bouldering. It's just the solitude. You come out and you hardly meet any people. And you just are a bunch of friends who go out climbing. That's, I think that's very nice. It's really relaxed. Can reverse that bit, yeah. I don't know if you once you've got that, and then if you move yeah. your feet up, I think it might be hard to come back down onto that because you'd be up on it and it's fucking not very good. I can get down. Yeah. I'm not going Yeah. But that, that, well, yeah, that's what I had to do. I think I had to bridge with my right foot in the crack, bridge up so you get your left foot onto there. Yeah. Because yeah. it's more moves up and then you got to fucking come back down. It's so scary, man. You can do really it. You probably do want to brush that crack a bit, maybe. The thing is, when you fall, you're going to fall uncontrolled, you know? That's so scary. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't want to fall off. That's why you hesitate. You're going to be spinning. Yeah, yeah. And that's nasty. You can hit your head first. No. Yep. Yep, that's it. The high balls. You don't find that so often, you know, in other bowler places. And with a with a with a really font blow like finish, you know, you have to really push yourself over the edge. That's pretty scary. Yeah. Come on, Stefan. Come on. 
Tom i Ernst, det er fedt ved. Det er Tom i Ernst, det er Just jump down, save your strength, and you can come back up again. Tom i Ernst. Åh. Åh, det var så jag think it gets worse uh, every time you go at it though. Okay, I think it does get worse. I'd be impressed if they do it without top roping. It's tough actually. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, someone will do it. I don't know really. Must be a crazy dude. <laughs> I thought I was crazy enough, but I weren't. <laughs> I think it will go. Either someone just will top rope it and then do it. Uh, because I think that's the main thing about it. That it's mental. Or it's definitely cooler if if it's done ground up without a top rope ascent before. That's definitely like standard setting. Come on. See, I could just bridge you. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It's okay, come it's okay. On. Further in, further in. Just give it a little bit more height. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, just a little bit more height. Come on. No. Come on. That is fucking scary. The beach area is a very special place that feels very wild, very kind of out there, lonely, and very pretty. You, you just long for there being more single isolated blocks on those granite washed, sort of sea washed platforms. The kind of surroundings I've ever seen before. Oh, it looks shit. Oh, 
Yeah. yeah, I'd say the beach area probably is my favourite area. It's more, you know, it's, well, it's the biggest area. There seems to be quite a bit of variety, as variety in the sort of styles of climbing there. Some ed edgy stuff and some slopey stuff, technical stuff, and you know, it's really picturesque setting. by the water that's uh, pretty unique actually you can probably find out in the west coast somewhere but not us uh, not us uh, with so many boulders as you have here yeah come on yes there you go yeah that's it Right. Come on. Come on. Come on, Ben. Yes, come on. Come on, man. Come on. 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 No, it doesn't. And the thing is, it's going to completely bardoor me. Yeah. If you don't that make way, that, don't, you don't that hold that, you're off and spinning, spinning into here. Way, exactly. now, I could see that. I think my favorite area definitely is Fogelberget, partially because of the setting and partially just because of the quality of the problems. And it's really, it's really dense. There is so many problems in a really limited area. Even like it's very close, and you're just by the sea. You can go for a swim. Like the swimming there is amazing, and it. I think that's definitely my favorite area.
I still like, like I'm very psyched every time I go there, which is fun. <laughs>